In this video, we're gonna go over four exercises that I highly recommend that you do before you have shoulder surgery. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel, Ed Debu, physical therapist from Integrated Physical Therapy in Bellingham, Washington. So if you're from Bellingham, like so many of us, you love to mountain bike. And I have a client of mine that was mountain biking and unfortunately had an accident, fell, landed on her shoulder, had an MRI, and unfortunately she has a torn rotator cuff. Now the difference is, and the thing to remember, is that she didn't break anything. So if you have a fracture, then these exercises are definitely not something that you're gonna wanna do. At the end of the video, I will go over why these exercises are so important because we're really trying to prevent another condition from happening on top of the rotator cuff tear. Like I told my client, I understand your shoulder is going to be painful, but what we have to do is we have to maintain the range of motion in the shoulder because what we're thinking about is two months, three months, six months down the road as we're recovering from rotator cuff surgery. So you're better off using some pain medication if you need to, but we do need to work on maintaining and improving the range of motion. In this example, my left shoulder is the affected arm. And a lot of times it's gonna hurt, you're not gonna be able to lift it up very much. So what we're gonna do is come up with creative ways to get better range of motion out of the shoulder without irritating it. First exercise is called the pendulum. And I have a can of soup in my hand. It's gluten-free. <laughs> Anyway, can of soup in my hand, it weighs about one pound. And sometimes if you have a little traction through your shoulder, it feels a little bit better. And the idea is you're gonna support yourself and then just slowly let that arm hang by your side. And give it just a little bit to kind of relax. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of use your body to swing it. And what you'll do is you're gonna go into circles first, start off small, and as you feel like you've got better range of motion, you can go a little bit further. Go clockwise. I would go counterclockwise. And then we're going to work on flexion. And the idea is, is that if you notice, I'm moving my body because if I try to move it with just the muscles of my shoulder, that's going to be a lot more painful. So I'm going to use the momentum to kind of get that going. And you want to go to that edge, that border of where it starts to get just a little bit discomfort. Because if I can bring it up to here, in reality, my arm is all the way up to here, which I'm, chances are I'm not going to be able to do without doing the pendulum. I would do the pendulum about 10 to 15 circles clockwise, 10 to 15 circles counterclockwise, and then 10 to 15 up and down into basically flexion of the shoulder. That's the first exercise. The second exercise we're gonna work on is shoulder extension. So remember, this is flexion and this is extension. So what you can do is if you have a broom handle, a PVC pipe, something like this, it makes it a little bit easier. But you're gonna put it behind your back, you're gonna stand up nice and tall, and you're just gonna slowly work on bringing it back as far as you can. Now in this situation, my right arm, the unaffected side, is just kinda of helping to guide the left one along. Now if you don't have anything like this, you can just clasp your hands together and you can do it this way. So once again, nice and tall, I'm not coming forward. I'm just going as far as I can. I'm going into the barrier just a little bit. I'm okay if there's a little discomfort at the end because we're gonna have to push it just a little bit. We're looking at about three sets of 10 into extension. The next exercise you're gonna do right after the extension and that's gonna be internal rotation. So once again, my left hand is the affected side here and I'm gonna to try to bring it up my back as far as I can. Now it's not gonna be able to go up very far more than likely, but don't worry, use your right hand. Now it's critical that you let your left arm relax completely. And then use your right arm to slowly bring it up as far as you can. Go to that barrier and go just a little bit into that barrier. And we're looking at about three sets of 10 on this one as well. In this example, my right arm is the affected arm. I like to do this in a door frame. Your goal is to try to bring your armpit as close as you can to this door jam. So you're gonna come up to here. Now you notice I'm not right in front. I'm a little bit off to the side. My thumb is pointing behind me and we can do a couple different things. I can walk it up with my fingers. I can glide it up with my left hand. And the idea is, is that as I can go up higher, I'm gonna step in just a little bit more. Go to the barrier and then back down. Now be careful because you're gonna to wanna to hike your shoulder up, so really make sure it's relaxed. And then glide it up as far as you can, and then back down. And chances are you're gonna get some discomfort at the back of the shoulder, but once again, that's okay. Slide it up as far as it goes, 
and then back down again. And we're looking at about three sets of 10 with this. Now, a common question I get asked is, how do I know if I'm pushing it too hard? An hour after you exercise, your pain level should come back down to what they were before you started. So for example, I'm gonna start my exercises right now. I'll take inventory. You know what, it feels about a two or three over 10. I do all my exercises and now it's talking to me. Okay, now it's like, ooh, it's definitely it. It's gone up, it's probably about a four or five. Don't freak out guys, wait for an hour. An hour after you're done, it should settle back down to baseline. If it doesn't, then you probably pushed it a little bit too much. A good idea too is to put some ice on your shoulder right after you exercise. Like I said in the beginning of the video, why are we doing these exercises? Because you do not want to have a frozen shoulder or an adhesive capsulitis on top of a torn rotator cuff. If you don't do the exercises and you have a frozen shoulder, then you're looking at two to two and a half years before you regain full function. Now, unfortunately, if you do already have a frozen shoulder, I will put a video up to here that talks about some things that you can do, pretty similar to what we already did, but the parameters are a little different. I'd like you to do these exercises, if you can, two to three times per day, always thinking about getting some more range of motion out of that affected side. All right, guys, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so so you don't miss another one of our videos. All right, take care, and hey, good luck with that surgery.